What's up guys, it's Cheyenne, and I am back from my first ASA tournament of the year, and I just wanted to update you guys on a couple things that I'm going to be doing with my bow and my arrows before I leave for Louisiana, which is going to be the next shoot. Um, there are a couple things that I noticed at this shoot that I want to fix and try before I get to the next one. One of the biggest things was my arrows. So. When I fletched my arrows, I just did a right helical like we usually do at the shop for pretty much anything. And a lot of people talk about clocking. Um, so basically seeing what direction your arrow wants to fly on its own straight out of your bow. And that's something that I ignored for a really long time. I really didn't think it was that important. Um, I didn't try to figure out how my arrows were clocking. Um, but when I was paper tuning, I did notice, because I like to put little smiley faces on my good arrows, if you guys follow my Instagram, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, I noticed that the smiley faces were coming out left. So they were clocking left out of my bow, but they were fletched with a right helical. Um, and even my bear shaft was clocking left as well, straight out of my bow. So, um, I didn't think much of it. I didn't think to change the helical or anything like that. I was like, I'll just shoot them like this and see what happens. Well, I got to the tournament and I got some slow-mo footage of my arrows flying um, when I was shooting some targets, just taking slow-mos for Instagram reels and stuff like that. But I was watching them and I noticed uh, how far my arrows are flying with a left spin um, before they correct themselves and turn right. And I was really curious and I was like, okay, I didn't know that they were flying that far spinning left. And I didn't really think about how important clocking would be, especially for how slow I shoot. Um, obviously I'm lower poundage and a lower draw weight, so my arrows don't have as much speed as the men that are shooting. Um, so this is something I never really finicked with before, but I think what I'm gonna do is strip down all of my good arrows, weigh all my bare shafts, and get everything that's within a tight weight tolerance as well, because I have a few dozen arrows to pick from. So I'm going to slim it down to hopefully a good dozen, that's the goal. Um, I'm going to strip the wraps off as well and try it without a wrap just to see if I can get a little bit more front weight. Um, so we're going to do no wrap, still a three fletch because I think four is too much for my speed. I don't need that much wind drift. And then I'm going to fletch them with a left helical and I'm going to see how they fly. Um, but this is something I wanted to talk to you guys about and I actually want to show you the video I'm talking about. So I am going to insert that video uh, right in here and you can watch my arrow flight um, and I'll tell you guys my little commentary on it as it plays so here you go this is a video of me shooting at a turkey um, that isn't that far away I think this is one of the better videos where you can really see just how far my arrow is flying with a left uh, spin and then if I can find another good one, I'll insert that after but on the turkey if you guys watch this clip right here so Obviously, this is slow-mo, so give it a second, but now when the arrow comes out of my bow, you can see it spinning left. Right before the target, you see it stop. Um, so you can literally see my arrow stop mid-flight, so I'm going to kind of like rewind it, play it forward a little bit here. Um, so you see it come out of my bow left, spinning left, and then it stops, and then it spins right once or twice before it actually impacts the target. I am shooting for all uppers, by the way, if you're confused as to why I shot that high. I shoot all uppers. Uh, that's just what I do. But you can literally see how far my arrow is trying to spin left, and then it's stopping right before the target, midair, and starting to spin the other way. Um, so I noticed that in every single slow-mo video that we took. Every single video I watched, my arrow was doing the same thing. It was flying a majority of the flight spinning left, then it was dead stopping for almost a full second of just no rotation whatsoever, and then it started spinning the other direction. Um, and obviously, you know, when we're trying to get precise and target archery and make everything as perfect as we can, I'm not too fond of my arrows stopping mid-flight and then having to change spin. Why wouldn't I want them to just spin the same direction the entire time as straight as I can get them to fly? Um, especially when it's windy and I'm low poundage and I don't need even more going on with my arrows with the veins and the wind and everything on top of trying to change spin direction. So I was like, why not? I might as well just fletch them left. That's, clearly that's what they want to do. That's how they want to spin and that's how they want to shoot straight out of my bow. So why am I going to fight that and make it harder on my arrows to spin straight? Um, so today I'm going to head over to the shop. I'm meeting up with my friend Dave because I do not have a left helical clamp for our bits and burger jigs. Um, so I'm going to switch those over, or switch one over because I like to use one jig for all of my arrows just to keep it consistent. 
Um, I'm going to switch one jig over to left and then I'm going to use the left helical clamp. We're going to do a three fletch and I'm going to shoot those and see how they do. And I'll try to get some slow-mo videos in Louisiana for you as well. But that's just what I'm noticing. So if you want to check your arrows, you can just put a little mark on your shaft. So just pick a spot on your arrow and put a little mark on it. This one, for instance, has like a number seven on it right there. And then put that mark straight up. Shoot it like three yards away from the target, not that far. And then just see if that mark turns to the left or turns to the right. Like you can look at the arrow in the target and see which direction that mark on your arrow ended up rotating. And that is how it is clocking out of your bow. So if you are curious about that, you can go check that out. Doing it with a bear shaft is probably the best so the veins aren't interfering with it. Um, so I would take a bear shaft, mark it, and then see how it wants to fly out of your bow. And then you can left or right fletch it based on what it's doing if you want to get down to it and get that finicky. Um, I know it affects me because I'm low poundage. Some of you high, higher poundage people, it's probably correcting its flight a lot faster. Uh, but for me, for it to fly 20 yards spinning left and then correct itself, that's a lot. Um, and that's probably not good. <laughs> so uh, I just want to eliminate that variable as anything that could be affecting my grouping. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to head to the shop now. I'm going to meet up with Dave. I'm going to refletch some arrows. I'm also going to change the magnification in my lens. I noticed that my biggest problem day two, uh, we shot the first 10 targets with no sunlight. We shot before the sun was up uh, because it was so early and it was Eastern time. And I noticed that I was having a really hard time seeing where I was supposed to be aiming, um, especially aiming at uppers, which is unorthodox for me. I never really did that before. And so I'm not familiar with where the rings are. So there was a lot of shots where I felt like I smoked it and it was off because I was just simply aiming in the wrong spot, which was really frustrating. So I think I'm going to increase my magnification. I am running a four power right now. I'm going to flip that over to a five and try that, see if that makes a difference. Um, and then I'll just change out the clarifier in my Hamsky peep and we'll see if that helps. So those are the two big things that I'm going to be doing, but the arrows is number one on my list. So I'm going to head over to R&R Sports right now and fletch up some arrows. Alrighty. Okay guys, I am back. I did not take any footage at the shop because I got super sidetracked talking to people per usual. Um, but I wanted to come back on and show you guys my new arrow. So this is now a left helical, um, which is probably hard for you guys to tell in the camera. So that is a left helical now. Um, I also took the wrap off of the back side of the arrow as well because I wanted to have a little bit more FOC, a little bit more front weight, um, and I think the wrap was just weighing the back end of it down a little bit too much, so the wraps are off, and now I have a left helical fletch as well. So they're not quite as pretty as my last set of arrows, obviously with the wraps and everything, this one's missing a knock, but they were super, super pretty. I just think that the wrap was a little bit too much weight and I wanted to swap the helical on it as well. So I'm curious to see how these fly at the end of the day. That's all that really matters. You guys know I love to do my fun colors, but getting your equipment to work the way you need it to is always number one. So I sacrificed the beautiful wrap to get some better performance out of these arrows. I think I have about a dozen, 11 or 12. This is number 10. I do also number all of my arrows. Um, I think that's super important so you can keep track. If one arrow is flying funny consistently, then you can kind of pinpoint it. Um, but have all of them numbered. They're all ready to go. It has been super rainy and nasty here pretty much every day. I have not had any time to shoot outside. Um, so I am going to do my best to get out and get some slow-mo videos of these arrows flying for you guys so that I can update you. Go to my Instagram and follow that if you don't already because I post a lot of shorter reels and stuff on there. Um, and I will try to get a slow-mo comparison of this arrow flying versus this arrow um, and show you guys what I'm talking about and why your helical direction really does matter. Hope you have a blessed day and I love every single one of you. And I will see you on the next one.